Hello everyone uh, and welcome to the Greeks channel. I am Kostis and I'm here with another guest today. He's Roy Pumu. Pumu. <laughs> PM. <laughs> How are you, Roy? Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm just counting down the days to Eurovision. It, it's getting there. I'm getting excited. I love listening to all the songs and yeah, I'm good. I know, I know. It's like a month, a month away. Mm. It's nothing. Exactly. It's nothing and a lot at the same time. Like, I can't wait. I'm like, when, it, when does it come? <laughs> does it come? <laughs> so you've heard all of the songs, I guess, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Multiple mm -hmm. times. Multiple times. <laughs> yes, I know, right? I want to ask you, I've heard you, like, yeah, when you react, like, making points about music. What's your mm -hmm. connection with music? Um, I don't know. I just love listening to music and my brain is kind of programmed in a way that I always like pay attention to details in music and also other things um, and so I always really enjoy music where there's a lot happening that my brain can focus on those things and so with Eurovision it's kind of natural for me to also focus on those details and to yeah. really like point at those and yeah, it's not really that I was born into a music family or anything, but I just really, really like music and really like analyzing music. So, yeah, that's my connection, okay, I guess. Okay, great. I love your nails, by the way. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> great. So, do we start with semi-finals? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, semi-final one. Who do you think is a certain qualifier? A certain qualifier? I mean... We're opening the show with Norway, and I think wherever you put that song, it would have qualified. It's a really strong song. She's a good vocalist. Um, it has a good chance to do well in the competition, even outside of the semifinals, I think. So yeah. I think Norway is definitely a certain qualifier. That's true. That's true. Anyone else? Uh, like, which other countries do you think, like, they're, they have it easy? <laughs> Well, there's a few, I would say. Um, I definitely say Sweden as well. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, it, it's the bookies' favorite at the moment, so yeah. I don't think they have to worry at all. I don't think Finland has much to worry either, especially since it's only Televote this time around. Yes. Um, the others, I could see a world where they don't qualify, but I also think Israel is quite a big one with a high percentage of going through. Um, True. when I heard the snippet before it came out, I wasn't excited about it, but I think enough people will like it that it will go through, definitely. Yeah, yeah. What about Serbia? You don't think it's a certain qualifier? Uh, it's just, I could see a Telemovish kind of situation happen, where, like, the fandom loves it so much, and then to people who don't watch Eurovision religiously, who just turning casually, don't fully get it. If that mm. makes sense. And I hope I'm wrong because I absolutely love the song. But yeah, me too. It I could see that situation up. So I wouldn't say it's like a 100% certain qualifier, but I would give it like 80%, 70, 80%. Yeah. I think that would be fair. That's true. And what? Who, which are your picks? Which are your qualifiers? <laughs> oh, we're going there immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> my picks would be from... <clears throat> uh okay in what order should i do this like i don't know hmm. my picks would be uh finland norway mm -hmm. serbia croatia moldova malta uh azerbaijan ireland latvia and czechia okay okay <laughs> okay i was i'm i'm a bit mm, surprised from azerbaijan Mm, why? Okay. I don't know. It's not like uh, many people speak. That's probably why, because I like the song. It's a nice song. But yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, say... I, I don't think it, it has the biggest chance of qualifying, but I think it's just a nice song to listen to. And mm. it, it's not going to be people's, I don't know. I think it could work out live as well, because they are obviously twins, so they could have a lot of chemistry. And 
it's just a nice True. song to put True. in your playlist and listen to and i just quite enjoy it i know i know right it's a bit underrated uh mm -hmm. because Definitely. probably it's a slow song and it's also in a semi-final with very dynamic songs so mm -hmm. yeah probably that's why people okay okay <laughs> you are the first one who says that the first one. Oh, really yeah yeah I mean, usually I have a bit of a different opinion than a lot of other people. Yeah, you like you like also kind of rock and indie mm. uh, music, right? If I yeah, like getting you correct from your reactions. Outside of Eurovision, I am mostly just a metalhead, so I okay. just listen to metal mostly, and um, yeah. I mostly go for rock bands, metal bands, and and you know, a bit of EDM so here and there. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember your reaction to Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> great. Uh, should we move to semi-final two? Okay. Okay, okay. So, who do you think? Do you think there are certain qualifiers there? Um. Well, you just talked about my Australia uh, reaction. I think Australia has quite a certain qualifier, especially closing the show and. Okay. I think for a rock song, it is very accessible to the public as well. It's not too in your face while still being enough in your face for the rock lovers to love it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is pretty certain, I would say. Uh, the same would go for Austria. I do hope they pull it off live. Like, I don't know yet. Um, they uh, sounded good in pre-parties, but I don't know. That's what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Have you heard them on pre-parties? They were good. Yeah, definitely. But like the staging, can you really convey the message they had in the, the music videos on the stage? That would be a bit, I don't know. I think and I hope they're going to come with a dance, like the dance mm. of the music video. I think they're going to go that way. You know, they're going to bring that dance that everyone knows. Uh, I would so. definitely hope so. Like the TikTok yeah. kind of thing, it, it would really maybe even go well on TikTok as well. I think so. Yeah, um, I don't have TikTok. I have no idea. How me neither. I would never use there. it. I know, right? I, like, you, you're you young. How old are you? I am 24. Yeah, you're a baby. I am too <laughs> old for TikTok, but you could have. Why don't you? I don't know. Is that your I just, scene? It, no, it's not my thing. It's just like, it started off with very, like, teenage, cringy dances, and that's not really my, my style. Okay. Um, but I still kind of scroll through Instagram a few times to just watch the same kind of thing. So I don't know why it's not my thing, but... Yeah, I never really got into it, and I don't know. <laughs> fair, fair, that's fair. Okay, and who are your picks from that mm. semi-final? Uh, so my picks are uh, Australia and Austria, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go with Slovenia. I think it has a good shot as well. Okay. Um, yes. I like Belgium quite a bit. I think that could Thank be really you. cool. <laughs> Thank you. I actually think that that's a really good shot at qualifying as well. That might be maybe not that certain, but one of the most certain ones in this semi final. I think. I hope so. I really mm -hmm. hope so. Um, I think Georgia uh, would be one of my picks. Mm -hmm. uh, Estonia would be one of my picks. Okay. Um, did I say Armenia already? No, right? No. You didn't, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I love Armenia. <laughs> and then uh, the last three would be Iceland. Mm -hmm. and then Romania okay and then lastly San Marino <laughs> yeah um, yeah I should expect San Marino from you uh, <laughs> yeah and Romania but mm -hmm. do you think Romania will qualify um I don't think it will but I just personally really like it. It's like an um, I, I really like his voice, and it's like a mm. a bit of a rocky electronic bolts because like you go like back and forth, very sway, and I just really like listening to it. I don't know what it is. Like I I realize it's not the best song out there, but I just enjoy listening to it. Yeah, I don't mind the song to be honest. Like I like the song and mm -hmm. his voice and his energy. That was amazing. The staging though. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> all over the place, like all over the place. I hope they come up with a better idea. I, 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 I hope just, so too. I just think he thought, oh, this could look cool or something. And then you went with all of that staging. And maybe yeah. now that he has got the broadcaster thinking about all of things who have a bit more experience, they can come up with like a cohesion staging. Um, yeah, hopefully, because uh, yeah, I heard that he did it uh, himself, the staging. And um, mm -hmm. 
I hope he will not do it himself in Europe. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And um, like, for example, Cyprus, I could really love, but I am just very cautious with how he will sound like live. Because okay. that's such a deal breaker with this song. The, yeah, it's it. I think it totally depends on if he will hit those notes, like the high notes and everything. He is doing it on Instagram videos mm -hmm. and on TikTok, from what I've seen from Instagram. Uh, but can you do it with the pressure of the performance, like with so many people? If he does it, he will probably qualify, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so as well, actually. And like Greece has got a good shot at qualifying as well. I don't know, just not really feeling the song, if that makes sense. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's a decent it's... song. I think it's a good way to put him on a stage in Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a young performer. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I don't 16. feel... <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, what, do, what do you think about Denmark? Um, it's just not really for me. It's like the kind of TikTok thing, I guess. And I know. A bit for really... teenagers, a bit more, maybe. Like, it definitely has a market. I don't think I am that market, but... I agree. Me, me neither. And I see... I see people saying that he there is a hype around this um, singer, but I haven't seen that really on YouTube at least. I I haven't seen that hype. Like, Not where really, where is no. it happening? Yeah, so I don't know. I know he is quite big in South Korea, I think, which is really random. But okay. if he made a career there, that's cool, I guess. Does he um, live there? I don't know to be honest, but. No. I, <laughs> I, I, they talked about it and then I was like oh it makes sense that a song like this would be decent in, in South Korea and that he come out with that mm. for Eurovision um, but I'm not sure if the European market is then gonna like it as much either um, mm. and it also really kind of depends on how they can use that vocoder that he uses on, over his voice I don't know how much of that is allowed in Eurovision and how much they yeah. can not use with that I don't know <laughs> True, true. I think, I think I have no idea. The, the, yes, because every year it changes. Like you are allowed mm. to pre-record like the other voices or have some things there. I have no idea. Okay, okay. And San Marino. I do you think that San Marino will? Oh no shot. no shot, no shot, <laughs> no shot. But, no, no, no. <laughs> but see, you like rock music, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do you think it's a good rock song, San Marino? Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a good rock song. It's just a, a catchy one. And um, I don't know, I just find myself bobbing along to it. And I still enjoy listening to it while it might not be the best out there. But I don't think you ever will get the best rock or metal song in the world in Eurovision. It's already cool that the genre is represented in Eurovision. Yeah, true. Eurovision is very poppy in general. Yeah, that's very true. Although I think like Maniskin had a good rock song, like a good rock, yeah. punk rock. It's not like... It's it's very, very good for pop, I would say. I, I okay. personally don't like the, the chord progression. It's very simple. It's very... A bit too simple for me. I like I said, I really like to focus on details, and there wasn't yeah. that much details in the Manuskin song. So for me, it wasn't the best rock song out there. But okay. I understand that it won, and I understand that it gained so much traction because, yeah, it is quite catchy, and you know, I, I love to see a rock band doing well outside of Eurovision, even like that's really cool. Okay, but, okay, yeah. To be fair, I'm not like a huge rock lover, so and follower, so yeah. So in my ears, um, mm -hmm. it sounded okay. <laughs> I have no yeah, idea. but that that's good. You know, they found a nice niche where they have, um, you know, they make rock music, but it is well catered towards pop people and true. who can just enjoy the song casually. And that's really good for them. That's true. That's true. Okay. I have some fun questions for you. Okay. Fun. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. Which song... Uh, had the best national final performance for you from the ones that won that they are competing Ooh. in Eurovision best performance um oh <laughs> that's a difficult question uh, 
I think maybe Norway. Norway, okay, okay. I, I, yeah, I know that there was a bit of auto tune probably used on it as well, which might have helped. But I think it was a strong performance that really conveyed the message they wanted to go for, and it really showcased her and the powerful meaning of the song. And I think it just fit together very well. Yeah, because yeah. because with Finland and and Sweden, with both, I think Sweden staging is a bit random, <laughs> like. It's cool, but it's like, what does it have to do with the two? Like, really? You think so? Yeah, like, why is she between those things? And, like, why is that also Sandy? It's about a tattoo and not wanting to, like, or... It's not about a tattoo. It's no, I know, a, no, 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 no. relationship. I know, you know, I know. <laughs> You're right, but, like, it's it, it felt a bit random. But it's a cool performance, definitely. And yeah. I'm curious to see how they will tweak it for Eurovision as well. Like, it's definitely one of the best ones. And Finland, I don't know, there was something missing, I, yeah. think, I feel. Yeah, Yeah, I have the same feeling as well about Finland. People don't agree with me in the comments, mm. but yeah, uh, like, I, I think I'm, I'm missing something. I want yeah. something. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved the song when it came out. And then I mm, saw the live performance and made a reaction on that as well. And I don't know, it just didn't fully click or something like the energy wasn't fully there it felt a bit i don't know i want a bit more <laughs> okay okay that's fair uh yeah i think i like the energy but i wanted i, I love the fact that they had, had the cha-cha dancers like that mm -hmm. i wouldn't i didn't expect and it was great but i think i wanted them either later or yeah or or something something in the timing of what when things happened something there should be reconsidered, I think. Yeah, uh, I agree. And for Sweden, uh, I how I got it was like, it's because it's about a relationship and they cannot mm -hmm. be together now, like something doesn't work. It's like they created an environment which looks like a storm, mm. which is like here inside feelings about what is happening. That's how I got it. I oh, true. Know. I don't know if this is what they were going for, but mm. this is what I felt watching. That's good, actually. That would make yeah. sense. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, question number two. Okay. For you, who <laughs> has the most impactful voice? The one that you listen and you get shivers. Uh, ooh. Is there one this year for me? Oh, yes. You can say none. Like, I don't care about anyone. <laughs> um... I think it might be for Delia from Iceland. Okay. Her voice is really, really good. Um, the song might not necessarily be the type of song that would give you shivers, but I think her voice, it may be a different song, could give you shivers. And I don't know, I'm very selective with a certain voice that does well. Like, um, I don't think there is that strong male vocal that I look for. Like, Cypress, if you can pull it off, it would sound amazing. Um, but I prefer a bit more of a, a rasp in the voice of a, of a male vocal. Um, okay. So that's what I'm missing there a little bit. Maybe France as well. I think Lazada has a good voice as well. Yes, yes. That would be the other one, I think. Yeah, those two. Okay, okay. Question number three. Who has the best outfit for you from a national final performance or for a, from a video? Okay. <laughs> um... These are difficult questions. Let me go through the list a little bit. Uh, <laughs> They're not that difficult. Come on. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> it's not really something I paid that much attention to. I think to the outfit. I I like Finland's outfit. It's very iconic. Like yeah, the, the, the green, just the top. Like you will remember that. I think that exactly works That's very, very well. I also think the Armenia outfit from the the video clip is really mm. good. I like that one a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it showcased her, I think, very well. Mm -hmm. We got who she is. Exactly. Yeah. Like it, it's really it's like badass and elegant at the same time. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, okay. Question number four. Who is the hottest for you this year? Oh. Uh I don't know. I haven't really thought about that too much either, to be honest. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. You cannot not think about uh, it. It's, I don't know. 
Hmm. I think I would go maybe with the girl from Iceland as well. Delia, okay. Mm. I think her personality really shines as well. I, I always gravitate towards personalities as well that really mm. make someone more attractive. I that think. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, that's what uh, I love the chaos. <laughs> what? I love the chaos. The chaos? What about Delia has a chaos? Uh... Well, just like her her Instagram stories are all over the place and like the TikTok. How oh, is it? I haven't seen them. Yeah, you should check about it. It's chaos. <laughs> okay, okay. Question number five. Which is the most memorable song for you? Um, I think that would be Finland. It's mm. just the most out there, the most unique, maybe, of the lineup. Mm. Um, Something you wouldn't see the, too often at Eurovision either. So, yeah, Finland is the most memorable, I'd say. Okay, okay. Question number six. Which is the most memorable music video for you? Music video? Uh, I think Austria, actually. I really like the Austrian music video. Yeah, that's it just very really... true accentuates the song and it tells the story mm. um yeah i think it's a really good music video okay okay and last question which song do you think is the most underrated this year by the fandom oh um i mean <laughs> i could go with my favorite song of the year and that is malta surprisingly oh that's your uh, favorite okay yeah <laughs> that's um something that's not on many people's radar but i think I think Malta and Ireland have a bigger shot at qualifying than people think. Um, Ireland? Yes, Ireland. You think so? Ireland is is going to do decently with casuals. We'll just tune into the show and be like, hey, nice anthemic pop song. Let's give it a vote, maybe. You I'm not saying so? it will qualify, but okay. don't fully write it off, okay? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know with this one. I, it's probably also because I... Like I reacted to all of the songs in the national final mm -hmm. in Ireland, yeah, and it was the one that I liked the least. <laughs> so, so it's like I cannot, it, it, and it never grew on me. You know, yeah. some songs grow on you after a while, but it mm -hmm. never did. It sounds so generic in my ears. I don't. Oh, know. but it is. It one hundred percent is. It's very generic. It's very simple. But I think that's also for some people enough. Like some people don't want complexity. They don't want that's true a difficult song. They just want something easy to listen to and. He's a very charismatic guy, I would say. And the performance, he, is, he, is. He, he sang it quite decently. I think that's what people really look for sometimes. And yeah. it can be just as simple as that to go through to the final. It's only five songs you have to defeat in the semi. So That's, that's yeah, that's true. And it, But the other thing that also like kind of bothers me, like bothers me, I don't think about it and get upset, but yeah. Uh, it's like... Styling wise, I think they're mm -hmm. trying to to give him the a Harry Styles vibe. Mm -hmm. They're going for that. I still, at least at the pre parties, how they style him. Even in the national final, like with the, the jumpsuit, which was yeah. jumpsuit. I want it if someone listens there and wants to <laughs> send it over. Uh, but that, like, is it him? Is it just, I don't know. I think he actually really likes to wear jumpsuits. Um, I don't know, I think he had an interview with uh, Irovision podcast, and I think they mentioned it, that he really just likes wearing that on the stage. Okay. It's, it's just simple, and it feels nice and comfortable, and, like, it looks good as well, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a very accessible costume that he usually wears in the pre-party so far, at least, and in the national final as well, so... Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. You are watching all of the national finals as well, or most of them, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. National final season is probably my favorite part of Eurovision. Like... Yeah, I've noticed that in your channel. You're, like, <laughs> more focused on the national finals. Yeah. You like them. It's just, uh, like, I want to pick out the song that would do best at Eurovision. And, yeah, just overanalyzing yeah. everything. <laughs> I know. So, from this, from Ireland's national final, which, mm -hmm. did you, which was your favorite? I mean... <laughs> there wasn't that much there that I really thought would do well at Eurovision. I think they picked the right song to do the best at Eurovision. 
but um, not not with that uh, state like not with no, that no, thinking no. as a song which one you liked even if you didn't think it's going to Eurovision or whatever mm -hmm. I would have picked Down in the Rain I think it would have been really cool to have more of a rap song and uh, I, I quite enjoyed it it was a bit too simple perhaps but it was yeah. quite cool to see that okay okay I liked this was a, this was a very unpopular opinion apparently but I yeah. liked Hawaii oh that is an unpopular opinion yeah but that's cool why did I you really like enjoyed it? it well why did you like it I don't know I just went somewhere else like when I listened to it I was like oh okay you just went to Hawaii and was like yeah yeah, yeah. I picture this <laughs> yeah and I felt that there were it was not only about that and that there was something underneath and mm -hmm. then I read the stories about his wife and everything and then they told me who he is I had no idea I was just listening to the songs I had no idea who he is and then yeah. they told me who he is and I'm like mm, maybe I have to take it back but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's always the thing like you just start liking music and then you find out the artist is a bit shady or something and you're like oh I don't know if I should still like it <laughs> but I know that's it's so still hard. music so I don't know <laughs> Yeah, I lo I love the song. I still stand by that. I love. Yeah, this song. but that's perfectly fine. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh okay. You haven't mentioned anything in these questions as well that I did uh, mm -hmm. about the big six, basically because it's Ukraine as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's go through them. What do you think about the big six? Uh, should we go through them one by one? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, okay, let's start with the host. Uh, no, the, let's start with the winner, uh, the last year's winner, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I really like this song. It's like, um, I really like his voice. It's very, like, warm. And um, it's a different type of song that you don't see that often in Eurovision as well. It's a bit more R&B kind of style. Um, I wish they went with their other song that they sent a few years ago, like Bonfire. I really like that one. It was oh, a bit more... Heard. Oh, it was a bit more uh, trap music. So ah, it was a bit more towards the EDM side. Um, but Yeah, we need that kind of music in Eurovision. We haven't had that yet, right? No, not that much, at least. I, I agree. There's a lot of like cool EDM genres in the national finals that you will never see at Eurovision. I mean, yeah. we've got Norway now, which is kind of a bit of a side trends kind of song, which is cool. Um, and we got uh, Serbia as well with the bass. Yeah. It's really cool, too. Um, but yeah, Ukraine, I really quite enjoy it. I think... It wasn't going to be my pick. It wasn't on my radar to win either. But now that it got picked, I understand it. Because it's not too in your face either. Like, mm. the message is nice, but also more general. Yeah. And I think that people would be tired out a little bit if it was very in your face about what's going on in Ukraine. Like, of course, it's terrible. and um, But I think people would be a bit icky about it. But I think this is a good midway of it. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, UK. Uh, it's a good song. I enjoy it actually. I enjoy you it more. You laughed a bit there. You're like, ah. yeah, I know. I I enjoy it more than I than you would expect, perhaps. But I am not sure if this song will work for Eurovision because it is very reliant on how the vocals or the the text is delivered. Because mm. a lot of the rhythm of the song goes through the text. And mm. if you miss that only slightly, I think it might feel very flat. Yes. So I think UK could be a potential song that unexpectedly flops a bit. Um, in contrary to what a lot of other people believe, maybe. But I think UK need to nail it and then it could have a good result but if they don't nail it they could also end up bottom five like no i agree with you and i think after the pre-parties most of the people agree with would agree with you like mm. because they she was she was not the the best at all of the greek part uh, the pre-parties mm -hmm. and uh, the, yeah people yeah were are questioning now how is she gonna do okay at the final mm. okay let's go with france who is the only one that you mentioned from this uh, group of songs <laughs> Uh, I think this could do better than people think, actually. Like, I think France could maybe even be an underdog for the win. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I, I feel comfortable saying that. Yeah. It's, it's, she's really charismatic in that music video. I didn't see the live performance that she did yesterday or the day before. I didn't see that one yet, but just how she looks in that music video and just how her voice sounds, you just know she's going to nail it live. 
Yeah. And I think it's a nice midway of being a French chanson, but also being modern. And I think True. locals could really, really like that. And uh, like I just did a video series with my friends where they reacted to Eurovision. And oh yeah, so the first part is out. Uh, yeah, they they are not necessarily Euro fans, and they really liked it, and they really gravitated towards it. And there was a few other songs that they didn't like as much, which I was a bit surprised by. So. I think France could really resonate with a lot of people, and I think it could do really, really well. I agree, and I watched your performance uh, in Madrid. Uh, mm -hmm. I think she couldn't uh, listen well from oh, okay. the earphones, and she was doing that a lot, a lot of times uh, during mm -hmm. her performance. But she kept going, and she actually sounded great. Like I'm not okay. a musician, so I don't know if she was at some points off key, like at a moment or two, but. She sounded great. I, I loved it. And I'm like, okay, I feel more confident here. And I think I agree with you. She's like, if we have a winner that we don't expect, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be her. It could be, yeah. It, it has a bit of a, a rise like a phoenix kind of feeling. When it's yeah. like kind of under the radar and when it gets live, you're like, oh, wow. You mm -hmm. know, something like that could happen. I can picture that. I don't know. Okay. What do you think about uh, my boy? Marco Mengoni, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a seasoned artist and his voice is really cool and I, I really like it. It's just a bit too simple of a song for me personally. Okay. It's just a cool Italian ballad and it's really solid. It's really good. It just doesn't move me necessarily, but it will get a good result in Eurovision, I think. I mean, Italian is a beautiful language. He sings it well. It's It's a good pop valid kind of thing and yeah people will vote for it so it will do really really well it's not necessarily by law yeah quality. your cup of tea yeah, yeah. exactly but yeah, i appreciate I, what it is <laughs> i i get that uh yeah the only thing is like we have quite a few ballads this year but mm. i think it's the most like stripped back ballad that we have for, i don't know why like it's not so heavily produced i like that mm. it's like but for that kind of ballad i would like if I would understand the lyrics and I could sing along, you know? So, yeah. yeah, because it's so stripped back and it doesn't have this production and it's like, wow effect, I would like if I could understand the lyrics. I mean, I've read them now, I've, le I've read the translation, but yeah. still, I cannot sing along with it. Yeah, but people who will vote at Eurovision won't be able to read those lyrics. Like Exactly. Maybe a commentator says, oh, the song is about this, but they have like 20 seconds to talk about the artist and what yeah. they did. And then, you know, so they might not mention it. So I do agree with that. And I think that's why it did so incredibly well in Italy and people might not necessarily expect it to win uh, in the fandom more. Uh, because the Italians know the message of the song. And exactly, they, they can don't. understand their words. Yeah, so... It makes sense it won, and it's it's a cool, decent song. I think it's solid, but... Okay, let's go to one that I think you would like. Okay. Uh, Germany. Germany, yes. Uh, it's in my top 10. Okay. It's not, like, the top of my top 10, but okay. it's a good song. Um, I wish his vocal was a bit more strong or out there, but I think it, it's mm -hmm. a nice bridge, again, for pop people to really start liking a bit more of a metal genre. Yeah, and, I think they, they strike a nice balance with that. Yeah, because they're not, yeah, even in my ears, I can understand that this is not like heavy metal. It's like very pop metal. Like yeah. it's, it's a mixture of... Uh, uh, it's glitter metal. Genres. <laughs> what? It's glitter metal. <laughs> yeah, it's glitter metal. But that's what I love about the song because it has all of these like opposites in it. Like it's blood and glitter, like saint and sinner. Like I know it's very simple, simplistic, but it's still like it's... They are nice opposites. I like. I like. Yeah, them. and to be honest, it was like definitely the best option they had in the national final. I agree. Like, after seeing them live, it was definitely the choice. I agree. I haven't seen all of them, uh, uh, all of their live performances, but mm. I've reacted to all of the songs. Yeah, and it was my first pick by far. It it initially wasn't, but after I got to listen to more of the songs, it definitely became my favorite. Which one was your uh, initial first pick? Uh, I think Misfit was the the one I liked the most. In uh, which one was that? Uh... It's more of like the punk rock kind of, like the punk pop boy song. I don't even remember it that much, to be honest, at the moment. But yeah, my initial reaction that. was a bit more big than for Bloody Okay, Party. okay. I, I like Trunk. 
for some mm. reason. I actually quite enjoyed it as well. I think people that underrated was the that second quite a bit. Choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It I... wasn't Ger Germany's second choice, but it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And last one, uh, Spain. Yes. Um, I loved it when it was in the Spanish national selection. I love the Spanish national like, uh, wow national selection in general. Like I mm -hmm. think it was really solid, really strong, and. Megara was amazing. Uh, Quiero Arder from Agony was really good as well. Yeah. It would have been good too. Um, and I think they picked the right song. Mm. I'm just concerned that it might not translate. Cause... I know some people say that, but I don't agree. Like, it might not translate with everyone. I mm -hmm. understand that because it's a very specific genre and quite traditional. But people who watch Eurovision, they lo yeah. like traditional music you know they vote for folk stuff and you know true but and... there's also a lot of people who just casually tune in who'll be confused by her just making noises yeah like... noise. <laughs> yeah it's, but it's not beautiful... necessarily a, a spoiler for a future video but the friend react thingy really gave a perspective on some of the songs uh where okay. i didn't expect it and spain was one of the ones where i didn't necessarily expect the reaction that they got um Okay, I'm going to watch it. I'm very curious now. Uh, <laughs> it's the last uh, one to come out, but yeah, watch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, by the way, since we say that, I will have Roy's uh, link for his YouTube channel down in the description. Um, and yeah, about Spain. What did I want to say? Yeah, I think also, what people forget, I know it depends where you come from, what's your background, yeah. what, are your, what is your knowledge about other people's, you know, traditions and stuff. You might not uh, resonate with this song, but this year the whole world uh, world votes, mm -hmm. and the Latinos will get it, mm -hmm. and that's a big audience. I don't know how many Latinos are watching Eurovision, but uh, I, in my analytics, at least in the reaction for the Spanish song, there were many people from Latin America who watched that. So yeah, if they watch but Eurovision, I agree. But there's only 12 points from that group. So, like, I agree that a lot of people would probably love that. But there's there are many be... countries in Latin America. So is it going to count as one or, or as different countries? No, as one. It's got to be one rest of the world vote that you... Ah, on. I had no idea about that. So that's one set of 12 points. Okay. So, so it's that much of an effect. It's one country as the rest of the world. Oh, but but I do world, agree so. with you that, like more in the north of Europe we might not understand it as much but I think more the southern European countries are a bit yeah. more exposed to the type of music already and will resonate with it more so I would expect more votes from those countries rather than from the north so I think that definitely makes sense as well yeah exactly and I am from Greece and uh, we have more similarities in our culture with mm -hmm. uh, uh, Spain so I got it straight away, and I've also because exactly. I have a theater background, and I know about uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, who is a poet, a Spanish poet. So mm -hmm. I've seen, I see all the references about, like in her performance. So I know, I understand, I completely understand, and I, I got it from the first time. But I get that it's not the same for everyone from all over Europe. Yeah, and I think that's really cool about Eurovision as well that you just have songs that do really well in one region and then maybe not as yeah. well with other regions, but the other regions have to listen to the song. They need to get exposed to the type of music. Exactly. And that's and really that's, cool. That's the great thing. That's, yeah. you know, the first time you might be like, oh, what is this? But then mm -hmm. then you will know about it. And the second time you will listen to something similar, you will be like, oh, it's like the other song. So this is a thing there, you know? So yeah. And even if you think it's just like, she's saying Aya Aya, you'll be like, okay, but what is she actually saying? And you might look up the lyrics. You might and look Google you it, exactly. It and, you know, it's just a really cool way to showcase an artist or a culture even. And I think that's really cool. That's what I love basically about Eurovision. Same, me too. Yeah. Uh, so you have a top 10. Do you have one? Uh, Yes, I do. Would you like to... Let us know. Yes. Um, Great. Start, do... from, start from 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, my 10th place is mm -hmm. Slovenia. So okay. Joker out of Carpe Diem. I think it's a nice song. It's, it's missing something, but I really enjoy listening to it, streaming to it. And I think they have a lot of charisma. They'll do well. Um, ninth, mm -hmm. Romania. 
It's so high. I know. <laughs> okay. It was it was even higher before. <laughs> Um, but it grew a little bit off me. I still really enjoy listening to the song, though. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. But I really okay. enjoy it. Okay, now I'm, I'm waiting. Like, uh, I'm very <laughs> curious about the rest. What's going on in that top 10? Yes. My eighth place is Croatia. Okay. I really yeah. like the shock factor. And I really, there's a lot of details in this, right? And I love details. And it's a lot going on. And I love that. And, you know. It's it's a really cool performance. I really enjoy it. I agree with you. I love Croatia's song. Mm -hmm. uh, my seventh is Germany. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good metal song that introduces people to metal. And uh, it's not the best metal song if you compare it to other metal songs. But you shouldn't compare it to other metal songs. You should compare it to Eurovision songs. So it's good yeah. in that regard. Um, so yeah, seventh for Germany. Uh, sixth, I have Austria. Okay. I just cannot sit still. Like I just, you just need to dance. You just need to, you know, bop your head and just. I really enjoy it. I think it's really cool. Um. Then top five. Mm -hmm. My fifth is Serbia. Nice. Yes, I, like I really like the bass in this song. I really like the 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 instrumentals. I think the whispery vocals. I know some people don't like it. I really like them. Me too. I love um, it. I really like the performance. I hope they can really just upscale it to the Eurovision stage and just polish it out. Uh, you know, they might not have the budget to do it at the national final, which makes a lot of sense. I think mm. they have something this, this year. But it was already very nice, you know. I really agree. Yes, yeah. 100%. I just hope they can polish it. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, my fourth place is Norway. Mm -hmm. I think it's a cool song. It's a really nice beat. She's got a great voice. It was a great performance. It will do really well. And I think at the moment it is, it should be the favorite to win um, Eurovision. I oh, think really? Switch, yeah, I do think so. It's got the nicest bridge of like doing well with the jury, doing well with the telephone. And I think it is the one to beat at the moment. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's very <laughs> interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My third place is Australia. Uh huh. Again, it's a good bridge between metal and pop, and like mm -hmm. it fuses it well together. But it also goes really hard with that breakdown in the middle. Uh, the nice guitar solo and the ending is really nice, and it's just catchy, and that's really good as well. I think for Eurovision and a metal song. So yeah, Australia did well this year. Okay. And then two left. Yes. My second place is Finland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's just a nice mix up of genres. I love genre fusing, and um, he does it really well. He performs it very well. He's it's his song. You feel it. It's yeah. his masterpiece. So I love it. And then my number one, which is very unexpected for a lot of people, perhaps, is I, Malta. Malta. Okay. Yes, yeah, you said it before that it's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. It's also unexpected because I, I was expecting a, something more rocky to be mm -hmm. your number one. and then Me too. <laughs> it's just I, 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 I play handball in my free time. And every single time I was at practice, I would just randomly have a song in my head. And it, it became Malta more and more often. It's okay. just super catchy. And I love the saxophone solo. Um, I realize mm. it's not the best song out there, by the way. I just like it the most. You like, like it? I, I think I those things play... can be separated. Yeah, and I guess you play handball in your sweater. <laughs> no, actually not. But <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. is, it, yeah, I don't know. It's just simple lyrics, nice beat, very fun, very funky, very... I might have overplayed Finland a bit too much as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Great, great. That was, uh, I think, the most uh, unexpected top 10 we've had so far here <laughs> from the guests. Some of them, not some, uh, not all. Yeah, of but I, I, I know I'm a bit different in my music taste compared to. That's a lot of other great, people, but, and that's yeah. what I love also about Eurovision because mm -hmm. you know we meet with the people with different tastes and we discuss about our songs and we say why and everything. That's... Yeah, I can literally make a case for every single song, and I could see why someone would like it or dislike it. I just, yeah. It's really cool that you can just discuss music in that way. Like, I love this song for this. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool that you love it that way. I don't feel it, but I love it that you feel that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wait, Roy, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me. Of course, <laughs> of course. I was watching you, so I would, I wanted to, uh, you know, have this chat with uh, mm -hmm. you. 
Great, thank you. And thank you everyone for watching one more time. And let us know, what do you think about Roy's opinions? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> kindly, please, kindly. It's just personal opinions. It's not real Eurovision, chill. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, like, subscribe to both of us. Uh, share the video and all of our videos with everyone you know. Uh, and see you very soon at another video. Bye.